When you visit a local animal sanctuary or zoo, you see a wide range of animals like lions, monkeys, and birds. But have you ever thought about the ones you don't see, or at least not very often? Not all animals thrive in or suit captivity. From the rare Javan rhino to some fish, here are 20 animals you'll strangely never see in captivity. Number 20. Great White Shark Visit your local aquarium and you'll see no shortage of exciting marine creatures like whales, stingrays, and fish. But there's one creature in particular you won't see, even though it's so easy to find in all major oceans. And that's the Great White Shark. Most of us have seen Jaws, right? So you might assume that not having a Great White Shark on display is all to do with our protection. But the truth is, it's for theirs. They simply don't adapt well to life in captivity, and they'll either die or have such a resource-intensive enclosure that you'll have no choice but to release them back into the wild. This is why no aquarium in the world has a great white shark. And we only know that through many failed attempts. For example, great white sharks were advertised as being on display at major aquariums like SeaWorld in the 1970s. While they would have been a sight to see, they weren't happy. They needed help swimming and wouldn't eat. It took just days or weeks for them to die. The longest period a great white shark was ever kept in captivity was 198 days at the Monterey Bay Aquarium. Those 198 days would have been some of the most exhausting for the animal workers. The small shark was kept in a specially designed tank, and it still ended up being released after six months. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Indri Lemur There are over 100 lemur species in many shapes and sizes, with varying population levels. One of the largest, and also one of the most under threat, is the Indri. Unfortunately, we can't save them in captivity, so we can only try to protect their natural environment so that they can save themselves. Injury are endemic to the eastern rainforests of Madagascar and have been under threat from forest fragmentation, illegal hunting, and habitat loss. They don't get around on the ground, but instead use trees at a medium elevation of up to 5,905 feet. As a result, they rely on the trees to provide them with food to eat. Because agriculture and logging activities have decimated some forested areas, they need to live in protected forests. They don't fare well with habitat disturbances, and we can't even step in to save them because they don't adjust well to life in captivity either. Only one injury has lived past a year in captivity, and none have successfully bred. Therefore, the only place you'll see them is in Madagascar. But for how much longer, we don't know. These teddy bear-like critters are critically endangered, with fewer than 10,000 individuals thought to be left. Number 18. Sayola. For a long time, we were discovering new species all the time, but it can sometimes seem like we've found everything out there, at least on land. However, that was proven not to be the case in 1992. During a joint survey by World Wildlife and the Ministry of Forestry of Vietnam, the very rare and critically endangered Sayola was discovered, and in quite a surprising way. The team found a skull with long, straight horns in the home of a hunter, and it was something they had never seen before. Before long, they had realized they just discovered the first large mammal unknown to science in over half a century. It was also one of the best discoveries of the 20th century. Sayola are cousins with cattle, but look more like antelope. They have two sharp, parallel horns up to 20 inches long, and both males and females have them. They also have white facial markings and sizable maxillary glands on their muzzles that they may use to attract mates or mark their territory. 
Because they are a relatively new discovery, you won't find Sayola in captivity. Instead, conservation breeding programs have been put together to stop poaching in the wild and provide a safe environment for them to thrive. Number 17. Barn Swallow Barn swallows are one of the most widespread land birds in the world, found on all continents except for Antarctica. There are estimated to be about 190 million barn swallows in six subspecies, with four subspecies migrating to the southern hemisphere for winter and others migrating to North America through Canada, the United States, and Mexico. Barn swallow numbers are in decline, with a 76% decline in Canada alone. So you might think we'd start putting some in captivity to protect them. However, their migratory behavior makes them less than suitable for life in captivity. So what could we do instead? Well, first of all, we could be on the lookout for barn swallows in our own backyards and be more accommodating. These birds prefer to nest on human-made structures like garages, barns, houses, bridges, and culverts. They build nests out of mud, grass, and fibrous materials and reuse nests for more than a year by simply refreshing the internal soft layers of feathers, hair, and grass. Rather than removing a mud nest that you see, leave it there in case it's a barn swallow's home. You may also like to refresh from using pesticides to increase food supplies for these cute little critters. Number 16. Giant Squid There are plenty of reef squid and bobtail squid in aquariums, but have you ever seen a giant squid in captivity? Probably not. Aside from the fact that they would take up a lot of space at up to around 42 feet long, giant squid are also open water creatures that simply can't adjust to life in a tank. They move against circulating currents and wouldn't know how to deal with walls. In fact, put a giant squid in a tank and they would likely hit themselves against the wall until they gravely injure themselves. However, that's not to say you can't keep them in tanks for a short time. Researchers have built squid tanks before, and they did so by creating giant racetrack-shaped tanks with circulating currents. By doing so, they were able to keep the squid moving around and around without hitting a wall. As you can imagine, the costs of building such an enclosure would be massive and may even outweigh the benefit of increased ticket sales at an aquarium. They also only live for up to about five years or so in the wild, so that may be considerably shorter in captivity. Therefore, we just have to be content with seeing video footage of them and viewing other squid species instead. Number 15. Narwhal Narwhals are like the unicorns of the ocean. These arctic whales have a single long tusk that can grow up to 10 feet long and no one's actually sure what they use it for. Some researchers believe they use it to find mates and assert dominance, while other research pieces suggest that they are full of nerves to help them measure water pressure, salinity, and water temperature. However, not all narwhals even have those tusks. Males and around 15% of females have them, which is a confusing piece of information for researchers who aren't sure why that would be the case. Another interesting fact about narwhals is that they have vitamin C in their skin. If you were to compare one ounce of an orange to one ounce of narwhal skin, they would have about the same. Some sources state that Inuit may not have survived in some parts of the Arctic without being able to consume narwhal skin. But these points aside, you may be wondering why you never see them in captivity. They have been in captivity, but now we know better. Several attempts were made to bring them into captivity in the 1960s and 70s, but these attempts were unsuccessful. They simply don't thrive, and all died within several months. There have been no surviving narwhals in captivity. Number 14. Javan Rhino out of all five rhino species we have, Javan rhinos are the most threatened. They are classed as critically endangered, which is pretty much an understatement when you learn there are only around 60 left in the world. All 60 that remain live in the Ujung Kulan National Park in Java, Indonesia. They used to live in Southeast Asia and Northeast India, but the last Javan rhino in Vietnam was poached in 2010. Javan rhinos live in tropical forests, which makes it challenging to know just how many we have. We also can't put them in zoos because there's a risk of injury and mortality by capturing them. 
This happened during the first Sumatran rhino program about 20 years ago. So all we can do is protect their wild environment as best we can and hope to bolster their numbers that way. And it's a bit of an uphill battle right now. They're vulnerable to habitat loss, poaching, diseases, natural disasters like tsunamis, and even interbreeding due to their small population. However, WWF has identified a potential site for a new population of Javan Rhino, and they're hoping to bolster numbers by establishing a second population. Fingers crossed, because we've already seen the Western Black Rhino and Northern White Rhinos become extinct in the wild in recent years. Number 13. Pink Fairy Armadillo Pink fairy armadillos are definitely one of the most distinctive animals we have here on Earth. They're about 6 inches long, furry, and have a soft, thin, and flexible pink shell covering half their body. Pink fairy armadillos are rarely ever seen. They spend most of their time burrowing under the ground and are also nocturnal. Anyone who does want to try to see them would have to head to the scrublands and deserts of central Argentina, which is where they're mostly found. Even though we didn't really have any idea of their population numbers, researchers believe their numbers are declining. This is because even though there were minimal sightings to begin with, there have been even fewer in recent years. Scientists believe climate change may be contributing along with the pet trade. However, it doesn't make much sense for there to even be a pet trade. They don't survive in captivity. In fact, the survival rate is so awful outside of their natural habitat that many armadillos die on the trip to captivity. As a result, you won't see them in zoos or sanctuaries, and you likely never will. Wildlife experts wouldn't want to risk decreasing their population even further, knowing they just won't thrive anywhere other than the wild. Number 12. Blue Whale I, for one, would love to see a blue whale in person. These marine mammals are majestic, beautiful, and let's not forget, massive. They're also endangered, which means we need to be doing all we can to look after them. You might think that involves putting them into captivity, but that's not likely ever going to be possible. They grow up to about 88 feet long, with the largest blue whale ever seen measuring 110 feet long and weighing 200 tons. I mean, look at it this way, even their hearts are as large as a small car. Finding an enclosure big enough to not only house them but make them comfortable would cost a fair fortune. The costs of doing so would far outweigh the benefits of the whale. Blue whales also like to travel, which they can't do in a tank. They live in the open sea from the poles to tropical and temperate waters. Each year, they make this massive journey visiting parts of the world close to the equator in winter and further from the equator toward the Arctic or Antarctica in summer. There are thought to only be around 15,000 blue whales left in the northern Atlantic Ocean, North Pacific Ocean, and the Southern Hemisphere. About 2,000 of those 15,000 live seasonally in Californian coastal waters and appear to be the only population that's thriving. Number 11. Blobfish Blobfish are found near Australia and New Zealand, and they are perhaps one of the ugliest sea creatures you will ever set eyes on. They are so ugly, in fact, that they were voted the world's ugliest animal. But they actually aren't ugly in their natural habitat, which is 3,000 plus feet below sea level. It's only once we accidentally pull them up in fissure trawling nets that the massive change in pressure causes them to lose shape. What we see is significant tissue damage. And that's pretty much why we can't have them in captivity. Unless we mimic their deep sea environment, they'll just look like terrifying blobfish and will probably die. The reason they undergo such massive changes as they're pulled through the water is that they don't need bones or much muscle mass when they live between 2,000 and 4,000 feet underwater. All the support they need for their body structure is from the pressure of the ocean. How they survive is quite simple. They just live above the ocean floor and move their mouths to catch food. Their main diet consists of crabs and mollusks, and that's pretty much all we know about them since it's pretty challenging to study them so far under the water. Number 10. Dumbo Octopus the Dumbo octopus gets its name from Dumbo, the fictitious elephant that would use its ears to fly. As the Dumbo octopus has flippers on its head that look like ears, that's quite a fitting name. These cute little sea critters are so small compared to other octopuses, only growing up to around 12 inches or slightly larger than an adult guinea pig. But unlike guinea pigs that you can have as pets in many countries, you can't have a Dumbo octopus as a pet anywhere. You also won't see them in aquariums or pet stores. 
They live in the cold, pressurized depths of the ocean with very few predators. They spend most, if not all, of their life unaffected by humans. I mean, they just spend their time swimming and foraging for food like crustaceans, polychaete worms, isopods, and more. Dumbo octopuses are naturally rare, so they have developed some unexpected behaviors to ensure they can still contribute to the population. Females can store sperm for a very long time and also always have eggs in various developmental stages to make sure they can impregnate themselves whenever the opportunity arises. Unfortunately, these little guys only live for up to five years. Number 9. Fangtooth Fish if any fish is gonna appear in your nightmares, it'll probably look like the fangtooth fish. This terrifying fish has the largest teeth compared to their body size of any fish we currently know about, and they use them to feast on scallops, coral, crustaceans, squid, and both small and large fish. Fangtooth fish live in the deep sea at depths of between 3,300 feet and 9,800 feet below the surface. They can be found throughout the world and live in the bathyal zone of the ocean with no sunlight and temperatures of around 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Scientists don't know how many fangtooth fish exist or even how long they live. However, it's a well-known fact that they are tough and adaptable. Even though you don't typically find fangtooth fish in captivity, some have been captured and put into aquariums. Here, they survived for many months, even though the habitat and water pressure were completely different from what they were used to. Still, without being able to replicate their most suitable environment accurately, most aquariums wouldn't bother to try and house them. It is much better to just leave them in the deep sea where they belong. Number 8. Sailfish Sailfish are a type of billfish, like swordfish and marlins. Billfish populations are at risk, and this is due to commercial fishing operations with fishing lines set up for tuna. Often, billfish take the bait. Having a smaller population of billfish may not seem like a big deal, but just one lost species can set off a devastating chain reaction, and scientists don't want to take the risk. So they're attempting to capture, raise, and release sailfish to bolster their numbers. They've done this successfully many times before with other fish like snapper and sea trout. But they have a battle on their hands with sailfish, which is probably why you'd never see them in an aquarium or pet store. It seems like these fish are susceptible to stress and are incredibly sensitive. Touching them with a net or accidentally with your hand can be enough to cause a stress reaction that ultimately kills them. University of Miami's experimental hatchery manager, Tom Capo, is dedicated to coming up with a solution. He's curious about how they seem to grow to a few inches long, disappear, then come back months later measuring four feet long. So far, he's managed to keep them alive for three days by swapping from white tanks to blue tanks and adding a current. The goal is to see research progress to where they can raise these fish in captivity and release them into the wild. Number 7. Kakapo Kakapo are flightless parrots native to New Zealand that were thought to be extinct up until the 1970s. 1970s. After some were found on Stewart Island, intensive conservation efforts got underway to bolster their numbers. By 1977, there were still only 18 known birds, and just 50 by the 1990s. Now there are fewer than 200, but bumper breeding seasons due to an abundance of fruit from the Rimu tree are giving New Zealanders hope. You won't find kakapos in zoos, but you will find them in semi-captivity. There's nothing the Department of Conservation doesn't know about their kakapo population, as all of them have names and live on two predator-free islands off New Zealand's coast. All kakapos have smart transmitters on their bodies and remote monitoring systems in their nests. Every mating season and every movement doesn't go unnoticed. The hope is to reintroduce kakapos to the mainland of New Zealand eventually, but they won't start looking at unmanaged populations until there are at least 150 breeding females. Until then, encounters with kakapo by the general public are almost unheard of, and their company is closely watched. Number 6. Oarfish 
We have some pretty clever scientists in the world who are capable of answering some of our most pressing questions. But ask them about the oarfish and they'll only be able to tell you a handful of facts. This fish lives in deep seas in tropical to temperate zones, and we haven't been able to research them in their natural environment. Much of what we know from oarfish is from the dead bodies that wash up on beaches. So, for obvious reasons, you won't spot them in aquariums. Although, we did get pretty close once. At the beginning of 2019, researchers obtained a dead pair of oarfish, performed artificial insemination, and managed to fertilize eggs. From the date of fertilization, they were developed for 18 days. Live oarfish larvae hatched and were observed for the first time ever. Scientists already knew that larvae faced downward and swam using their pectoral fins while frequently opening their mouths. They were excited that they were seeing this very behavior with the oarfish larvae. However, even after all this effort, the larvae didn't eat and died four days after hatching. Well, at least now we've had the first successful AI in hatching of oarfish, so that's a good start. Number 5. Platypus Platypuses are so unique looking that it's only natural to wonder where you can see them for yourself. These monotremes, which are egg-laying mammals, live in freshwater areas of Tasmania and the eastern and southeastern coasts of Australia. You'll also see them in wildlife sanctuaries, but you can't just visit your local zoo anywhere else in the world, as they are incredibly precious to Australia and culturally significant. However, that changed in 2019. Two platypuses, a male called Berurung and a female, Eve, made the long trip to San Diego from Taranga Zoo, Sydney in Australia to serve as ambassadors. The goal was to communicate the importance of freshwater for wildlife and humans. You can view the platypuses in the Nelson A. Milberg platypus habitat, which has a naturalistic riverbank, three pools, nesting areas, and tunnels. As platypuses are most active at dusk and at night, the lighting cycle has has been reversed. According to San Diego Zoo, the platypuses adjusted quickly to their new home and started playing in the waterfalls and hunting for crayfish. So even though platypuses are rare to see, they do exist in zoos. Number 4. Mountain Gorilla all wild apes are endangered or critically endangered, which is why massive conservation efforts are underway to look after the ones we have and potentially encourage further breeding. Visit your local zoo and you might see lowland gorillas or, more specifically, western lowland gorillas. There have been great debates about whether gorillas belong in zoos or not, regardless of whether they thrive in captivity. Should we just be letting them live natural lives where they may die young, then die out altogether? Or should we be putting them in zoos where they can breed and increase their numbers? There's no such debate with mountain gorillas, though, as we simply can't have them in captivity. There are only around 1,063 wild mountain gorillas left as of 2019, with poaching, habitat loss, and disease being their main threats. It's only natural to want to save them by putting them in captivity, but we've tried and failed. Attempts were made in the 1960s and 70s to capture live mountain gorillas and form a captive population. Adult mountain gorillas were killed to take their babies during this process, but none of them survived in captivity. The reasons why aren't actually clear, since lowland gorillas seem to live and breed in captivity just fine. Some researchers believe mountain gorillas' dietary needs and stress response responses are more complex, but we may never know. Number 3. Star-Nosed Mole Star-nosed moles are interesting-looking small moles found in the northern parts of North America. They get their name from the touch organs on their face in the shape of a star, and these have about 25,000 tiny sensory receptors set on about 22 appendages. Star-nosed moles typically live in wet lowland areas and poorly drained marshes. 
However, they've also been spotted in dry meadows and the Great Smoky Mountains. They're not rare or uncommon, but we don't know much about their social behaviors, as they spend a lot of time tunneling through marshes with their unique shovel-like front legs. It's not always easy to observe them, either. It may also be true that you won't see any star-nosed moles in captivity, as they generally don't thrive. However, there have been some kept in zoos that seem to do okay. According to Richard Weigel's book, Longevity of mammals in captivity, the longevity record for a star-nosed mole is two and a half years. This star-nosed mole lived at Washington's National Zoo from 1988 until the beginning of 1991, and it's not known whether they had one or more than one. Number 2. Red-Lipped Batfish Think back to the first time you visited an aquarium. Did you see any fish wearing lipstick? Probably not. First of all, fish don't wear lipstick, and secondly, fish that look like they wear lipstick aren't really suitable for life in captivity. We're talking about the red-lipped batfish, and it is as it sounds, a fish with red lips, almost like it's wearing lipstick. If you're gonna see this fish anywhere, it's in the deep water surrounding the Galapagos Islands. Similar batfish called rosy-lipped batfish are also present around Cocos Islands. Most everyday people won't spot these fish in the water, but keen divers may notice them if they travel down the depths greater than 100 feet. They've also accidentally been caught in nets. Red-lipped batfish grow up to about 15 inches long and don't look like any ordinary fish. Aside from their unique lips, they also have distinctive pectoral, pelvic, and anal fins. Unlike other fish, they can rest these on the sea floor and use them pretty much as legs. As they're pretty vicious carnivores, they would never work well in an aquarium. They'd end up eating other small fish and crustaceans. Number 1 Dugong Dugongs are marine mammals from the Serenia order, which includes three manatee species. You'll be forgiven for not knowing what they are or where to find them, because most people don't. They are most often referred to as sea cows and tend to live in the coastal shallow waters of the Indian and Western Pacific Oceans. Here, they'll feast on sea grasses. There are around 70,000 dugongs left in the world, and at least 15,000 of that population live around Torres Strait. They are also one of the most common mammals around northern Australia's coastal waters, even outnumbering dolphins, seals, and whales. You might think that with this information, you'd see them in captivity, but it's complicated. Breeding is way too hard in captivity, and even feeding them is hard. So there are only six currently in captivity, two of which are in Australia. A male called Pig and a female, Wooroo, live at Wildlife Sydney. They eat lettuce instead of seagrass, and there's no chance of them ever breeding. The best thing we can do for dugongs is let them live their best lives in the wild. Not all animals are gonna suit life in captivity, and I don't really blame them. If they've been used to so much space, they probably wouldn't take kindly to being gawked at by humans all day in a much smaller area. Even though these animals rarely appear in captivity, or not at all, have you ever seen any of them in person? I'm curious to read your story in the comments. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!